uh, the art of black hair. I don't know if you are aware though, but Madam C.J. Walker uh, was our first self-made millionaire black uh, female who made a million dollars uh, back in the day, but she was born in uh, 1867 and she died in 1919. And the business was sold to in 2013 and it's still around. But uh, she was the first one to come up, uh, bring about uh, black hair care products and they're still selling on the internet. So you can check uh, the internet and you'll be able to find her products and who owns them and who's selling them and what they look like. But she was our first self-made female black millionaire. But here in the United States, uh, there's a man called Willie Morrow. He's the owner of California Curl Products. He wrote a book explaining the art of black hair. And uh, it's good, very good book. As a matter of fact, I used to work for his company. That's why the name of my business is called Cal. It's short for California Girl. Willie Morrow uh, is a, a barber by trade when he first started, but he owned that product. And I don't know if you are familiar with the Jerry Curl. Well, the Jerry Curl is one of his inventions. Ooh, he's a black barber too. And uh, by him owning that company, he started a, a, a crusade on changing the texture of our hair, making it a little softer for everybody in the country. And all types of people like that. They like that Spanish look. So it was called, back in that day, it was called the Jerry Curl. No, it wasn't. It was called the California Curl. Jerry is a white. Uh, entrepreneur in the hair business. His name was Jerry Reddy. But they also stole his ideas because he didn't spend any money on advertising. However, uh, Willie Morrow is the inventor of the curl and it's, it was called the California curl. The next type was called the relaxer. That's when you straighten the hair. You straighten the hair like completely bone straight. Whereas uh, most blacks like that style because you can do a lot of things with you know, you can do a lot of things with that too. You can get the finger waves. And the finger waves are coming back right now because uh, they were very, very uh, important styles back in the twenties. I don't know if you watch television, but if you notice the television uh, back in the day all of our black actresses and they had these finger waves. And so now, today, 2021, you see finger waves again in the hair. So most styles, they go around and we use them and then they go out of style and then we come back to them. And now most of my customers now are coming back to the curl because they like that carefree look. So it's more of a carefree look, the curl. And I do quite a few of them every, every week and you just use a moisturizer. And the California Curl, of course, I told you all earlier that it, the owner of his name was Willie Morrow. Well, they're still in business and they're in, located in their home office. It's located in San Diego, California. I used to fly to California to put training and uh, also demonstration. I used to demonstrate in Florida, Georgia, and Alabama, wherever he wanted me to go. But our texture of hair is so wonderful. The afro, the afro is back now. And I remember when I was in high school, I had an afro. And nowadays, everybody's saying that they want to go natural. So they're going back to the afro look. So with the afro look, uh, of course, you know, it's a natural state and, and you can shape it up and do different things with it. And then when you get tired of it and you want to change it, you can, we can blow it dry. I became a cosmetologist because my mother, 
My mother made all of her children, she wanted all of her children to go to college and take a trade. My trade was cosmetology. My mother used to tell us that uh, you'll never become rich working for someone else. Never. So the best thing that you must do is to find your own joy. Find something that you enjoy and that you uh, can make money from. And uh, during that time period, I uh, was doing hair in high school. And then I was making clothes in high school. I used to go home in the afternoon and make a dress. And for me and my girlfriend, and then we would wear it to school the next day. I would do her hair and then other friend's hair. So I decided that my uh, trade would be cosmetology. So uh, that's what I decided to do. Oh, quite a bit. Pompano has changed so much since I've been here. See, when I first opened up my businesses, it was in this plaza here. And uh, all of the new buildings that are coming in Pompano, the uh, apartments um, for low income, for moderate income, and for 55 and above. All of the things and the changes that's been around this area, like in this building here, uh, the CRA came along and offered us grants to replace the windows and the doors. So I, of course I applied for that too. So we had all the windows and doors replaced here at this business. And then the security guards, they're around now. And so they put new lights in the uh, rear parking lot and cameras, which I love. And Hammondville Road is becoming more and more beautiful every day. And uh, I just like all the changes. It just make it Pompano a great improvement. And uh, and I just love everything. And all the improvements are good, great. The padlocking center, the senior center that they're building, the other apartments they're building out near Powerline Road. They're going to be nice, and everything is improving. So I see a lot of changes happening here in Pompano and also in District 4. And I like the way the city has incorporated young blacks to work uh, with, with them to help bring out these types of projects. This is very nice. Oh, I uh, love this journey. Because for some reason, working for yourself is such a pleasure. And being in business, you just have to be good at what you're doing and do a good job on each one of your customers. And uh, all of my businesses that I've had over here, I've had a beauty supply store, which was great in the 80s. And uh, I was doing quite well in that. And then I went from that to a uh, nail salon which was doing fantastic too. If you want to be in business, you want to do something that's not everybody has a monopoly on. If you're going to be, a, and then being a hairdresser, believe me, that's going to be around forever. So that's one of the better ways to, to stay in business, to be self-employed. I buy my taxes, I do all of those good things that we're supposed to do, and you, you just take care of your business and you take care of your customers. Completing your jobs makes a big difference. And around Broward County and Dade County, everybody's heard of Cal's Beauty Salon because I've been here just that many years. And it's because I keep reinventing myself. They say, now this, this year, they're saying, uh, oh, you lost your job. You got to reinvent yourself. Hey, we've been doing that for years and years, reinventing ourselves to do other things. So that's what I did back in the 80s, and that's what I continue to do today. I'm training new people, accepting new young people, their ideals in here, and I want to change. I want them to continue their business and to do what's right as far as making money and having an entrepreneur.
entrepreneurship that you won't have to worry about. So if you're going to start a business, the best thing to do is not take out a loan unless it's a grant. If it's a loan, you got to make sure you're going to have a job to pay for it. So you might have to keep your full-time job and work on your business plans with the money with the money you bought for the I mean you I mean the loan money. However, you got to have a job to make sure you pay your loan back. But the best thing is not starting out with debt. So if you want to start out with a business, plan it. Start out small and as you make money, you grow. That's how you do your business. And that's how you stay in your business. And everybody wonder why I've been here so long. It's because I've managed my business. I've managed my business properly. And if you get self-employed, all you got to do is find a business that you know you will flourish in. And then be good at it. And then you can do well, just like we've done. You know, I've been a millionaire, and then I've been poor too. I've been a millionaire again, and I've been poor too. But the best thing, I've survived all of these years in business. So you have to give and you have to take. But you learn things from others. Every disappointment is a learning experience. Everything you do, you learn from it. Every mistake you make, you learn from it. So what you do, you turn around and make it better. But see how you can make it better. Just sit alone and just think about what you're doing and just make things change for yourself. And I also do uh, summer training for young uh, girls who are in high school. And I allow them to come here and uh, get a little training from the professionals and uh, us oldies. And they learn how to do different things from answering the phone and uh, cleaning and towels and hair. They watch us and everything. and. Uh, they learn quite a bit, and we really enjoy training it and passing it on. So the key is finding something that you could do well and just go for it. Because like my mother used to tell us, if you could do something for yourself and you do it well, you can make plenty of money from it. So all you got to do is sit back, think about what you're going to do, and be the best at what you're doing. Be the best. I consider myself the best haircutter in Broward County and the state of Florida. That's how well I consider myself as far as cutting hair. Any short style, any long style, I do that. But we have girls here who do everything and I just love my job and, and my customers. I love them and I've had generational customers. So now I'm on the fourth generation of customers. I'm doing the grandchildren of my first uh, customers. I'm doing their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren, so I'm in that category now. And they all seem to respect me and love me and love the way I do their hair. But it's a passion for me, and, and I've done it over these years because I enjoy doing it. I enjoy making people beautiful, and I enjoy making them feel better about themselves. So God is about love, and I love the things that I do, and I love my customers, and I love this community. So that's why I've remained here all these years. That balance too, that you want. So, blacks, we love our hair, but we just wish we had more. We wish we had more hair and that it was easier to maintain. Everybody wanted to maintain, but they have a lot of good moisturizers nowadays. That even Willie Morrow, even California Curl, and also I have another company that I use, Design Essential. Well, that's a black company. It's owned by the McBride brothers. They're two twins, chemists out of Atlanta, Georgia. They own that company. And um, they made a good moisturizer for natural hair. You spray it on and massage it in, and you can just take an afro pick and just pick it out, and it comes out so soft and nice that it doesn't hurt. And see, when you're combing your hair, you, 
it's hurting you, breaking your hair, you're damaging your hair, so your hair shouldn't be treated that way. That's how come I explained earlier that you should start combing your hair from the ends down to the roots, not starting at the roots and pulling it out, because that's all you're going to do is pull your complete hair out, break it off, damage it. Uh, there's a lot of young girls now who want to go natural, but they only go natural for a little while because they were so used to that weave, that straight look. Mm -hmm. And they go natural for a little while, but see, when they take that glue out of the hair, they pull it out. So that's how they have chunks and plugs of hair that's missing. But if you go to professionals, they can put it in right, remove it with the proper uh, removal solvent. And there is a, a, a removal for the glue that you have to buy, but most shade trees and most people who do hair at home, they don't buy it, they'll put some alcohol on it. And alcohol is a cleansing agent. You know what I'm talking about when I say cleansing? Cleansing, you know, it's not no solvent for removing glue. You gotta buy the right kind of stuff to put on the glue and let it sit for a while so it can soften up the glue so it'll do, end up not taking your hair out as bad. But most of the time, it takes people hair. Oh, yes. Me, I would rather see you with your own natural hair. You can get you a nice short haircut and be sharp as a tack. Or if you got long, thick hair, you can get it blowed out and be flat out to make it look like you got a perm. So I would prefer people using their own hair. Because I know for a fact that if you do that, you're going to have hair longer in life before you put in more chemicals. If a hairdresser don't tell you the truth, don't go back to it. <laughs> Just because you want to be blonde doesn't mean that you, you know, you have to be blonde. Just because you saw it on a magazine cover. The thing is that if your hair is not, uh, I mean, it's damaged and it's not in good shape, you shouldn't get no color on your hair. You shouldn't get no dread, you know, dreads. If you've got thin hair, how are you going to cover up the big old thin parts? And see, one thing about me too, when I've been in business this long is because I'm very honest with people. I'm not going to cover up anything just because you want it covered up. I'm going to tell you the truth. And most of the time when they go home and think about it, they'll realize that Miss Cal, she told me the truth. So, and then plus if they think about what I'm telling them about the chemicals and the dry and the brittleness, they will understand that's the truth. A lot about of young hair. people and young parents are finding out it's better to keep their children's hair natural. And I've also been explaining to them, keep it natural till they get in 11th grade. Keep it natural. What's wrong with it? Who are you trying to impress? Keep it natural till you get in 11th grade. And then that way, if you decide you want to put a perm on it, you can. And then they have a nice, beautiful perm. And then by the end, they'll be more responsible. And you can teach them to go into a professional hairdresser and get it done right and keep it up. Keep it from breaking off. Get your trims. You need a trim. You can't have all that long, stringy hair. So, it, you know, once a lady gets a hair perm, and then you've got all those split ends, and when you have a split end, and, and the split, what happens with the split end, if you don't trim it, it just keeps splitting. So it just keeps breaking off. It gets thinner and thinner. So if you trim it, just like a hedge in your yard, you trim that hedge, what happens? It fills in. And that's the same concept the hair works on. If you trim it a little, it'll be much nicer and then it'll look good. And then you have that balance too. What you have to do is take up a trade, learn how to do something with your hands. Welding or whatever you want to do. Just go ahead and do it. And those of you I also say that are college graduates who have uh, college educations. You become the CEO of your family's company. You go and take the tests and take the exams and pass all of them and get the certificates. And then what you do then is go and hire all your cousins and uncles and aunties who are, who are not working on good jobs. Send them through some training school. And all of you can work under the same company under entrepreneurship under your family name. That way wealth is going to continue in your family. So if you can do that, you'll make it. Because that's what my mom did with us. We all worked in her businesses. And we all became self-employed. And 
none of us, uh, I mean all of us are doing quite well, all my whole entire family, and we was raised by a single mother. Well, that's what I'm doing now. And I just passed, I just I do three ways, I do up things, and I do uh, a lot of other things too. Scalp treatments, and uh, it's, it's, I'm glad to have you here. Uh, yeah, that's what that's what I'm doing now. So I just gave her a rinse, and now I'm gonna wait about 25 minutes, and then I'm gonna rinse it out, and my hair is gonna be black with no damage or anything. Nice. So uh, that's one blessing from the permanent couple. You always have to put them in our hair. But if you do, remember they're gonna damage your hair. You can't say that Miss Cap didn't tell you. <laughs> Nail technicians. That's Dauphine's daughter. So we go and doing generations after generation. That's how come you keep it in the family. Pass the training on and allow your family to participate. And that's her daughter. She's been working with her mother for years. And she's very good. She knows all the assistance procedures.